Good afternoon, folks. I'm your host, a.k.a. Jim Lettuce. Some call me James, but some call me Jim Lettuce. We care about industry trends in technology and entertainment. This is the Temporary Space Show, formerly known as the Official Temporary Space Podcast. That's kind of a mouthful, so we changed it. Um, it's supposed to be a video show that has been postponed, so this, mo- this month it's still going to be an audio podcast. Um, on the show, we only care about two things, technology and entertainment, and how these two industries affect each other. You can watch all new episodes of the show on our official network channel. You can also download the podcast from Mixcloud. Just go to TemporarySpace.net. That's our website. As usual, I'll go over a list of topics based on articles I find on the internet, and I'll touch on the industry trends that I see, and I will make predictions based on those trends. Today, we have two guests, not just one. We are promoting the epic fantasy created by none other than Jesse Pennington. How's it going? Oh yeah, what's up man? Thanks for having me. No problem. He's here to promote his new book, Frostfoot, which can also be found on our website. But we also have a second guest, the editor, James McIntosh. Hey, what's going on guys? How's it going? Good to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Alright. So, we're going to take a short break and then we'll get started. All right, without further ado, let's get started. These are the first half of the show. We'd like to go through the topics, the things I want to talk about. Um, I encourage discussion, so feel free to chime in. The first topic is our franchises are running together. Uh, this is based on an article that talks about Sherlock Holmes, the, the TV show, the BBC one with uh, Cumberbunch. <laughs> and uh, it's about how... Our, our franchises are going together. He's slowly turning into James Bond. And I agree. But why? Why is this happening? Do you all notice this? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I've been, I've been pretty current with the show. It's, it's definitely taking that trend. It started off pretty traditional Holmes-ish, but in like a... There's like, it's like there's more stunts. Yeah. And there's more, like, I remember he repels through a window at one point. Oh, yeah, it's, just, it's getting more and more dramatic. It's... And then, like, the Guy Ritchie one, he was, like, straight-up Krav Maga Batman style. <laughs> and, the, like, the beginning of the second one with Robert Downey, there's a whole scene where it's like, what is this Jason Bourne? Oh, yeah. And I didn't like it. But, I mean, I would agree that all of our franchises are fried. They're merging. Like, have you seen the new Triple X trailer? The Vin <laughs> no. Diesel movie? No. I have not. Also. But you're familiar with the old Triple X movie, right? Is Vin Diesel in this one? Yep. Yeah. He is, okay. But it looks like Fast and the Furious. Okay. <clears throat> and they're all the same. I don't know True. if that's good or bad. Like when they, uh, when the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock came out, he was like basically playing Tony Stark like a little bit. Like same Robert yeah. Downey Jr. Yeah. But with an English accent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But like bad, bad boy, but super smart. So it's, it's okay. I mean, I think this is going to equal, like, a slowdown in movies. It's just going to get... We're waiting for something new. Yeah. This, like, we're going to end up with, like, a Twilight version of James Bond. <laughs> Can you imagine what that would be, though? That would be awesome. End of days. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I think... I mean, I like... Do y'all like the new Sherlock? This The BBC version? Oh, yeah. I like, I like the new show. I watch it all the time, but it's... I've uh, I've only seen the first three like the hour long episodes. Okay. I haven't I haven't gotten all the way through it or caught up or whatever. I have no idea what they're even on, but I mean I liked it. I thought yeah. it was cool from the start anyway. And you said you watched it. Oh yeah, I've watched all of it. Cumberbatch. He's, yeah. he's good, animal. and I like Martin Freeman. It's Bumble yeah. Snatch. Yeah, I like Martin, <laughs> Martin Freeman. <laughs> Did you say Bumble Snatch? Yeah. Cumberbumble yeah. Snatch. Cumberbumble Snatch. <laughs> well, that's all I've got to say for that one. Let's move on to the next one. Sounds good. Okay, VR plus movies equal success. There's this uh, Alien movie, uh, the new one, Ridley Scott's Alien Covenant. 
basically, if you saw Prometheus, that was a legitimate spinoff from the Alien series. Mm. Because I know Ridley Scott directed at least one of the Alien movies. Mm. and um, But they're making a VR version of it. Like, are y'all familiar with these VR movies? No. Because no. right now, like, VR is new, right? But they talked about it in the 90s. It's, it's better now. Mm. But they still don't know what to do with it. And so we have, like, you, you talked about the Batman VR game. Oh, yeah. I mean, game applications are... But wasn't it like right wasn't it like yeah. a demo of a game? It wasn't like it's a whole game, right? Yeah, it's all, all they have is is little demos for like for instance Star Star Wars Battlefront. There's yeah. there's like a little demo, so you can pay like twenty bucks to get this little demo VR thing, so you can see like what might be. In the well, future. how long is it? How like they're what are you short. for? They're pretty short. Uh, I think the Star Wars one, it's like one flight mission where you're in an X-wing fighter, and then the Batman, you're going yeah, through like one really run. disorienting. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really not though. I, I was surprised because I was I was not for VR for a while. Yeah, I didn't think it would be that great, but after playing it and so you like this, you don't I, feel I, like I you wasted it. your money. I didn't. Hey, it wasn't my money. Oh, okay. well, there you <laughs> so go. no, I didn't feel like I wasted. <laughs> if I if I had the money, I would. I'd probably oh, spring yeah. for it, but yeah. you know, right now it's like what a thousand dollars or something. No, you I can get know. you can They're buy them cheaper. refurbished for cheap. Oh, my cool. uh, my brother in law got his for like three fifty refurbished, like the, okay. the headset and the, the headphones and everything, it's and then pretty much everything the games are. I'm, I'm <clears> probably gonna wait until there are full games out though. <clears throat> That's how I feel. I want to do it, but I want I want like a whole. I don't, I don't want demos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, demos. Yeah. yeah, you gotta make it worth it. Yeah, if you get a new one, like the PS4 one, mm. it does like a $500 bundle. Yeah. Mm. It's not bad. That's like I the guess. cheapest one. But yeah. now, so now they're talking about making VR movies? Yeah. See, they're making... It's the same... They're at the same stage. They have these like little short movie versions of VR where it's basically like a 360 video that you can like That sounds pretty watch. cool, actually. It does sound cool. And like the new... The new Resident Evil game is VR for the whole thing. Oh, that's yeah. nice. And so I, I don't know how about I feel about the movies. I, I kind of want to wait till they have a whole movie. Yeah. But I mean, is it is there an interactive one where you can go to different rooms, or is it just like mm. a, like a roller coaster ride where you have to? You're just there it's, in the action. Yeah. I mean, if it's a movie, around. it's probably like a roller coaster because if yeah. there's any interaction, then it becomes a game. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean I think it'll be good. I think it's it's gonna be very gimmicky and roller coastery now. But we'll see how it turns out. I'm more interested in surfing the web in VR. Yeah. Like can you imagine like a website set up like a room? Oh yeah. That you can like that Futurama episode. Sure. <laughs> no, Wait, which fe- one? <laughs> do you get do you remember that one? I don't. It's, <laughs> it's one of the earlier ones. It's actually really good. Yeah. Uh, I remember because they go into the internet and it's like they have their Is virtual Lucy avatars. Lou? I've seen the one where they're like, no, <laughs> that's a good one too, though. So, like, they get their avatars or whatever and they're walking down, like, these streets and they can jump up and fly and stuff. Mm. Eventually, it leads to, like, uh, them going to Leela's Cyclops planet. Yeah, doesn't she get married to some guy? Yeah, he's a, he's a yeah. Shape, shape-shifting alien. He becomes a Cyclops, and he has, like, five wives. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, like, I a scam artist, yeah. sort of. Yeah. yeah. We're getting to that, though. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. What? Becoming shape-shifting aliens? No, just, like, <laughs> the way they have VR, where you can, like, you can hang out with people yeah. in VR rooms just, now. Just give me Sword Art Online, I'll... <laughs> well, that's the next I step, right? Will willingly be trapped in that game. 20 years from now, I'm sure. Well, are y'all familiar with Star Citizen? Uh, yeah, familiar. my buddy was telling me about it. They've been working on it for a while now, haven't they? It's like a universe. It's basically everything No Man's Sky said it's it was going to be. supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. But they have VR support for that. Okay. And it's just, it, when do you draw the line? Because, okay, we play Destiny now, right? right? I'm so glad I'm back into that game. Thank you for getting me into it. Yeah. But, like, we were playing, and I thought, we weren't in the same room, but it felt like I hung out the other night. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you draw the line? What if people only see people through VR? Does that count as a social life? I think so. Yeah? I mean... To a degree, yeah. Yeah. Don't necessarily need, like, physical contact or whatever. Yeah, but what a lot. What about like for kids to be on VR and, and all the time? Oh, is, yeah, isn't yeah. that bad? 
I'm as a parent, I'm definitely like kind yeah, of against that you, initially. You know, yeah, like, yeah, you wouldn't want your kid to do that like all no, the time, and they you know? won't. Like hell no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, they're gonna be outside learning the basic stuff. You know, they gotta learn like world physics first before they start messing around with the fake stuff. Gotta go play street football. <laughs> yeah, come home with some bruises. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, you want people to develop skills, but hanging out in VR is very cool. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah, and you can have your own avatars, kind of like Sword Art Online. Mm. I like well, and there's there's another. Go. I think I told you about there's another anime that's kind of set after Sword Art Online. It's called Excel World, where okay. where it's like the VR technology is implanted in everybody, so they can just like literally just be walking around like surfing the web in their head like, dude it's really cool and an awesome concept is that like a continuation of the story yeah i think it's if i recall correctly it's set in the same like universe it's just like i don't know 10 15 20 years after the events of sword art so after like vr is just like universal nice so it's kind of like sounds cool i don't know about that having oh. it installed yeah what if you get spyware yeah it's scary i don't know <laughs> for real Oh, that's another thing. With VR, there's going to be new forms of pop-ups yeah. and viruses, you know? That's where just the bottom half of the screen is ads. And yeah. <laughs> what if what if you're using, like, a HoloLens and you're driving and you get, like, a porn ad that pops up? <laughs> you know, who's, who, who's held responsible for that when you crash? Probably you for wearing it while, like, yeah. operating <laughs> yeah, but your actually, car. Actually, in the near future, when people start wearing those all the time... Yeah. It'll become, you know, like people have headphones, like half the people you see in public will be wearing headphones. At all times, yeah. You know, they're saying that VR is more like a peripheral, like a headphone or a monitor. But it affects your sight. That goes along the same lines as like people texting and driving and stuff, though. Yeah, they could use the same rules. there's, there's There's a sense of social responsibility where you probably shouldn't be doing that while you're driving. I mean, I know I do it. On occasion. I'm not above it. Hey, man, police could be listening right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's you're all right. incriminating yourself. <laughs> they don't know my identity. All right. Let's move on to the next trend or topic. I'm really interested in this one. Desktops are disappearing. Uh, the article I used is... Uh, it's actually a video by Linus Tech Tips. It's a big tech channel. I don't know if you guys watch tech channels, but this is a big, a good one. A big slash good one. But they talk about, this is the newest, it's the $9,000 Acer Predator 21X. It's like, okay, this thing is like... Sounds intense. It's basically a portable desktop. It's like, they said it's like 20 pounds. God. And it has all kinds of whatever graphics card you want in it. (laughs) But we, we are for real hitting a point where desktop computers are not really going to be around you just don't need them anymore no everything's getting more and more portable yeah yeah i think it's really cool like they'll still make desktops i guess but yeah. it'll only be like enthusiasts who build their own yeah yeah i like having having a desktop um i, I bought mine like well i've never had like a, a high-end laptop necessarily but i just bought like a desktop a couple years ago mm-hmm. and uh I mean, I like it. Uh, Is it the one that you had something built? Something homey about it. Yeah. 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 But I can see why, like, if a laptop was just as expensive or whatever and just as good, it would benefit me to get it because then, you know, if I wanted to bring it over here and work on something, I could mm-hmm. just pack it up. Can't do that with my desktop, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And especially, like, if your power goes out, you can't keep working for another X amount of time. That's yeah. true. I know they have some kind of like power set up for that, but it's a lot of trouble. I looked into it. It's not really, you're better off just getting a laptop. <laughs> That's a good point. I didn't think of that. <clears throat> yeah, I've had a, like a desktop strength laptop for a long time, but I, I do miss having a desktop. Yeah. I definitely, but why though? Because it was like more why? powerful? No, not, not from a power standpoint. There's just something about a desktop that like, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like you can, like with my laptop, I'll I'll just be sitting on the couch watching TV while I'm on my computer. But when when you're at a desktop, I mean, there's like you're kind of honed in. Yeah, yeah. Laptop, you know? I kind of know what you you're mean. Like more, it's just like from a gaming standpoint alone. Like I 
used to play computer games a lot more before I had my laptop. <laughs> oh, so it's like more special when yeah. it's like a, a space in your apartment. Or yeah, whatever. I mean, you, it's not something you like think about day to day, but it's, like, I just, I, I almost don't use my laptop at all anymore. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, especially now with phones getting as, phones and like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, tablets and everything getting as good as they are. Yeah, dude, they'll be just as good yeah. eventually. I'm just waiting for that single pane of like glass that does everything, like in Star like Tony Stark's. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. or Star Trek. Yeah. Or in uh, that movie, that book, 1984. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They have these things called telescenes, I think. I've never actually read the book. I've just heard a lot about it. <laughs> it is an excellent book, and a lot of it is coming true from what I hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was like my favorite book to read in high school, I think. Yeah. yeah. I liked Animal Farm and Ender's Game. A Ender's Game is fantastic. Phenomenal. You know. What do you think about that movie? It's shitty. Is that the one Dude, with the kids where they fly the so ships or whatever? Yeah, they're yeah, like, they're like taught to be commanders from a young age. So they're Yeah, like trained like, they're like future tested Spartans. and trained. But what are they yeah. are they fighting against like aliens? Like what's Yeah, their, they're uh Okay, so they're in space and they're fighting aliens. Yep. So they think they're playing a game, but really they're commanding real life troops that are way away from Earth, oh, invading the yeah. homeland. Spoiler. Oh Sorry. snap! Yeah. Anybody who hasn't spoiler read it, alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> We're a little late there, but, but whatever. That book's like twenty years old. Yeah. If you haven't read it yet, get on it. Yeah. Because it's good. I want. That's what grabbed me. For, like sci-fi like it's what got me into sci-fi to begin with reading that book really I mean I read it before it was required in school but I've always liked reading I was uh unhappy with the movie yeah a couple reasons one it came out on my birthday and I was <laughs> so excited and I got pre-ordered a ticket Just hyped up <laughs> yeah so I kind of set myself up for failure there yeah. but like they skipped over. I mean, it's a great book, and there's so much detail in it. They just they couldn't get it all in one movie. They should have chopped it up or something. Uh, uh -huh. That's a lot of my favorite parts. That's always like, the, in the problem. Beginning with of the movie or the book. Making a movie yeah. version of a book. Yeah, you, you can never fit in all the nuances. That's I mean, true. That's, that's why they split Hobbit into three movies, even though that was the shortest of the Lord of the Ring books. <laughs> yes, they were so long though. Yeah. Yeah. It was. They added a bunch. And they added stuff. But you have to, otherwise, yeah. or you end up making like like a like a binge watching show, like House of Cards, where the you mm -hmm. know it's a whole movie, but it's like yeah. twelve episodes, twelve hours long. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would just assume just watch everything as TV shows. Yes. Yeah. I mean, then you can you don't have to skimp on the content. You can just. I kind of prefer down. that too to yeah. get it, yeah. not have to do it in two hours. You have. Yeah. More room. Game of Thrones, like, how many hours worth of, like, screen time do they have now? So oh, many. Yes. Three episodes an hour, that's what? They spend more money on a show than a movie just because <laughs> you have to film so many hours of screen time. Yeah. Yeah. Each episode, something I read, like, a year or two ago is that each episode was, like, $7 million. Whoa. Oh, I know. Well, because they, they film in, like, like Badass all locations. over the world. I mean, yeah. they were in like Spain and like I think they were in Greenland and like they went to uh, Croatia. Paid. Yeah, yeah. They they're getting paid like top dollar because it's like HBO money yeah, too. Yeah, and they have such a huge cast too. Yeah. Well, it worked. That's why they're doing Westworld. Did you watch that? You finished it. Hmm. Have you seen Westworld? I am on season some uh, episode three. Okay. I've never seen it. I watched, yeah, Dude, I watched like. I, I know watched it's good first. though. You will definitely need to it. <laughs> Technology and entertainment, like, oh. that show is like defined by oh, that. Oh, yeah. No, I watched the first two episodes and then stopped because I was like, all right, my wife needs to watch this with me. So then we went back and so I just started. So it's that good. You yeah. want to bring someone along. I was like, I, I, I need to bring someone along for this journey because it's, it's pretty epic. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's it's great. brutal. Did you finish the season one yet? Of Westworld? Yeah. No, I've only seen two episodes. Oh, okay. Cool. Maybe three. Gotcha. I got finished the season. Yeah. It's good. I'm Very excited. Good. Very good. Yeah. So they're making another one, right? Yeah, yeah. Sure. It, I believe they're going to continue it. Because Game of Thrones also is like, that's like their big one, and that's going to be ending. done in a couple seasons. Cause, so cause they, they have a few more? writing. <laughs> they ran out of content. Cause Aren't he just they still waiting for him to do with like one last book? Yeah, he's... Well, uh, I think he's done. I they... Know. He, he doesn't care anymore. He doesn't right? care. He's like, I, and he's rich. I, yeah, I made my money. I'm good. good. Whatever. 
Because I know he trolls people about it, like, yeah. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> well, he, he uh, met with the show creators, though, and gave them an ending point. So yeah. they can still finish it, even if he doesn't finish his book. Well, I think that this is the last season coming wow. up. Lucretia uh, at work. She was telling me that they're going to go to season eight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The next see. season is season seven. So they're, they're yeah, supposed so to they film two more. more. Okay. Yeah. I like it, but I don't have HBO Go. I have to get it on my PlayStation 4. I had it on my PS3. Now I can't. I steal it from my parents. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I do Netflix. Yeah. I, I mean, I... We should just make a pool of HBO Go right just, now. Let's yeah. set that up. <laughs> you want to throw just in like some Crunchyroll while we're at it? <laughs> Y'all do Crunchyroll? Yeah, I have Crunchyroll. How does that work? Is it free with ads or what? It's free with ads, and then you can pay to obviously get the ads removed, and then you can make your like watch list and stuff. But okay. I, I like it without ads. It's not super expensive either, so... It's worth it, especially to see all the new animes that are coming out mm -hmm. and just kind of stay. Because it, I mean, they post everything that's new. Yeah, and the anime on Netflix is not so hot. Not There's mm -hmm. a few good ones, but just there's not that many. Ones. Yeah. Did, you, did either of you guys watch Seven Deadly Sins? Yes. Dude, that was a Netflix original. Yeah. Yeah. They make their own anime now, and it was, Dude, it was really good. Frostfoot, man. Not, not to get ahead of ourselves <laughs> or anything, but like... I've that thought about this a lot, and I've thought, like, and maybe yeah. trying to bring the story to... We'll get to that later, though. I don't, yeah. don't want to... Yeah. <laughs> we'll save it for part part two of this yeah. show. Part two. But Netflix is... Netflix original content is something to, like, keep an eye on. The stock definitely went up when they started doing that. Yeah. I'm sure Marvel helped. Yeah. yeah. All of their Netflix Luke, Marvel Luke, shows. Luke Cage is good. Luke Cage is good. Daredevil is... All right, well, speaking of Netflix, our next topic is Netflix is getting stronger. Did you like that little segue? That was perfect. Know, right? Yeah. The article I used is uh, from Variety, where it talks about uh, their stock is just super high right now. They're really focusing on their original shows. Which because is smart. They don't really make that much money on the other shows because they have to pay a license fee mm -hmm. to use them. But so do you all have Netflix? Yeah. Yep. And do you pay for it yourself, or do you use a family member's Netflix like I do? I use my my mom's for a while, um, but my wife and I just got our own. Okay. I mean, they, they limit it to the number of devices you can have streaming. Yeah, you can have like time. two or three at a time. And you can you pay, have to pay like more. pay more to have more devices active. Yeah. And I mean, between me and my brother and my parents all had the same account and then I'm pretty sure I gave it to like a couple friends <laughs> so there were times where I would go yeah, on Netflix yeah. and be like ready to I'm like I'm gonna watch Breaking Bad right now and it'd be like too many active accounts right now I'm like, oh, yeah. Come on. yeah I, I paid for my own yeah uh, yeah finally yeah. I couldn't find anyone to <laughs> <laughs> now I've got a couple of freeloaders using mine yeah I get really upset when I can't watch it I change the password and that's, hop on that's why you gotta <laughs> diversify you gotta dig, dig move but like, you know yeah. hey, you gotta do what you my gotta nine do. bucks a month <laughs> yeah. they raised I'll it give actually the password when I'm done that's why you gotta diversify yeah, you gotta, you gotta they raised it from anything. it was nine something for a long time and they raised it to ten and people lost their minds is it ten now yeah I think it's what it's yeah. 10.99 now it's getting, yeah, it, yeah like maybe six months ago or a year ago so. it used to be like seven dollars yeah 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 because yes. they used to be because they used to still do the dvd rental oh. do they still do that? i don't think they do i don't believe i don't know so. i mean i think they just did that for a while to like bully blockbuster out of business and then well, they i think like, they did right. that at first and then some <laughs> guy was like wait a minute we could just have digital no. yeah we can yeah. just have digital whoever thought of that but you know they gotta pay for that original brain. content i guess yeah. Yeah, pay for those. They're doing a lot of stand-up deals. Dave Chappelle signed like yeah. a sixty million dollar deal after for his, like after he was on SNL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, it's like three specials, sixty million. Jeez. And like Chris Rock did the same thing mm -hmm. for like two specials, but he got way less money. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you got to be funny for an hour, and we're gonna give you twenty million dollars. That's yeah. that sound fair? <laughs> yeah solid deal that sounds awesome I think I could get together some funniness for an hour <laughs> and they also hour. have like stars like Adam Sandler doing it yeah he did a deal for like three or four movies he, yeah he was in oh, <coughs> what it was called he was in a Netflix original movie yeah that was it it was, it yeah. was like the one that was like a I remember scrolling past it, like it. A, the, the crazy like eight bodyguard or something well there was there was one was where he, it was like a the 
the Tarantino movie about the eight people. Yes. It was like Crazy a spoof eight. of that yeah, called like the Fantastic Eight. Yeah. It, it was actually really funny. We reviewed it really? on our Netflix podcast. Really? Yeah. <laughs> But um, I'm a sucker for those stars. I saw two stars, and I was just like, nah, I'm not. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it <laughs> is bad, but You're when you watch it, huh? ah, unfortunately, yeah. I guess so. They put it. They I flash I, them right there. It's I mean, I have a hard to. time not ignoring them, you know. Yeah. Or, but there are also a lot of Adam, Adam Sandler haters these days. So anything he's in, they're gonna be like, fuck that. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same with uh, what's his name, James. Who? Fat guy. I can't remember his name. Gandolfini? <laughs> no. Kevin James? Kevin James, thank yeah. you. Oh, he yes. had a movie, a Netflix original, he's too, been recently. He's a few things. And, and it was kind of bad. Everybody just rags on everything he's in. Just yeah. Paul Blart. And he's easy to hate. Typecast. Yeah. Dude, it's Paul Blart, way. do you know how much money that movie made? The That's first like, one. The and then they came one, out with a second. The, the second one, one made money, pretty? too. <laughs> They'll probably make a third one. I feel like you can just make was, whatever and people will go pay to see it. That's sort of true these days. Paul Blart was like his peak. <laughs> if you can call so that it's, a peak. It's, I know. You know, it's something though, I guess. Yeah. Like, I mean, hey. You're... He probably gets so much hate on like Facebook and stuff I'm though sure. from that. <laughs> I'm, sure. He, I'm sure he doesn't care though. It's his no. millions of dollars. He's yeah. like, oh, like yeah. I get the last laugh. He's, He's on chilling. I'm hanging Whatever. out with Adam Sandler and David Spade every day. <laughs> yep. I'm sure they're pretty good guys to hang out with. Yeah, I heard Adam Sandler, he, like, purposefully films movies in places where they want to go on vacation. Nice. They're like, oh, let's do this one in Spain. I want to go there. (laughs) All right. There's one more trend on here I want to talk about. M. Night Shyamalan. Shyamalan the Ding Dong, as the internet likes to call him. Shaman. His epic trilogy. Now... Let's talk about it's that movie Split. People throw around that epic. Yeah. Pretty. Well, okay. So <laughs> Not to hate on M. Night, but... Well, so we're on the same page. <laughs> epic. When I, but when I say Split, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. The dude with the different... He's a killer. Uh, oh, is that the dude who plays Professor X? Yeah, that guy. Nice. This movie. That looks pretty interesting, actually, mm-hmm. from the, the preview I saw. Yeah. That's all I know about it, though. It's uh, it's corny. It's definitely an M. Night Shyamalan movie. <laughs> it's better than the Elevator movie, though. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. You ever seen the Elevator movie called Devil, right? Yeah, it's called Devil, and the entire movie, I think they're in an elevator. And uh, Yeah. I didn't I, I mean, see it I, or hear about it. <laughs> I saw, yeah, I saw the preview, and I was like, mm, no. Good. I've been wanting to rewatch uh, The Sixth Sense, though. I've never seen it. Really? Nope. Never? Nope. What about uh, Unbreakable? Classic. Nope. That's no? Not, that's another good one. You've seen Unbreakable? Yeah. That's a good one, actually. It's been a while since I've seen the one. I could I could, I could, use a rewatching too. Uh, but yeah, Sixth Sense, man. If you get a chance, check it out. Oh, yeah. but that's a good one. And then I know Bruce Willis is dead the whole time. So. Well, see, that's the thing. It kind of rides yeah. on that plot device. I know. And so I, I don't know how good it is. I knew the plot. I knew the twist. The int- Like, I've known the twist since the movie came out. And yeah. I've <laughs> had no interest in watching it since. That's kind of how his movie... Like, that's the famous thing he's known for is having, like, a twist. Yeah. yeah. Like in that movie Signs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Signs is good. I liked Signs. It was, a, uh, it was okay. <laughs> Mel Gibson was funny. Yeah. He's always entertaining. If not insane. Well, they're one and the same, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. why you like him. It's like, what's he going to do? Okay, so the trilogy. All right, so we're, spoiler alert, we're going to talk about the movie Split and the ending. So if anybody doesn't want to listen to it, turn it off now. So is... Is Split a trilogy? It is. It's, it's, so At it's, the very so end. That's the first okay, so let me explain the plot. Okay, these, these hot girls get t- kidnapped, and he's a crazy guy. That's literally the whole plot of the movie, okay, right? promising. Right? I'm, and I'm, he's I'm got up. different personalities, and they all the different personalities talk about this one other personality called the monster. There's like a name for it. And throughout the, the movie, it, it explains more and more that there's like this final form, basically. Where he can like crawl on walls and he's super strong and fast. Okay, so Super Saiyan 5. Basically. <laughs> basically. And 
the whole movie, you're like, what? This is bullshit. But it's M. Night Shyamalan, so mm. of course he appears towards the end. And it's actually fucking badass. Like, he, like, crushes this old lady, like, with his hands and stuff. And so it's like, you find out it's all true. All the abilities they said he would have, he has. And it's like, the whole time there's, like, this subplot with this therapist who's discovering that he kind of has, like, tapped in to powers of humans because this is a real thing they have documented that there's been women that have uh, multiple personality disorder and the two different personalities will have a different menstrual cycle and so like your brain has the power to change your body okay and so this movie explores that like what if you could have your brain could really change enough to be strong i mean and scientists say we've only tapped into like ten percent of our brain. So yeah, that's, exactly. Did uh, did either of you guys see that show called Stanley's Superhumans or something? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's oh, like a documentary kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's a yeah. documentary. They go. He goes around to. I don't know if he he's not actually in it. I think he just like, he, like does like an intro. It, so. He signed yeah. off on it. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, you can use my name. It's cool. Yeah. But yeah, um, they go find like people. The one of the ones that I really remember is uh, this guy who could remember and calculate any. Like math problem, yeah. or I mean, within reason, but like, Points. people would be like, How, "What day was it?" Uh, one thousand four hundred twenty-two days ago, and he would give like the date, like the exact yeah. date, in like a second. Well, there was another guy that could, he could like light a light bulb just by like touching it or something. Yeah, Dude, that's like X-Men. I was like, I know, I was like, oh, yeah. cool, electricity powers. That's my dream. That's yeah, my yeah, but I wouldn't use it for good. Oh that's yeah. Course, Would you rob sure. banks and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> I don't, don't want to work for a living. <laughs> You're damn right I rob banks. Right? So. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, well, it's a trilogy, though, because at the very, very end, of course, he escapes, right? Mm-hmm. And it, it cuts to, like, this bar, and on the news, they're, they're calling him, oh, his name was The Horde. And the news lady's like, blah, 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 he kidnapped these women, and he's being called The Horde. He is at large. Blah, blah, blah. And she, like, shoots him with a shotgun and it, like, doesn't go in and stuff. And he, he had no shirt on, like, no armor. And the people at the bar are like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? And then it pans over and Bruce Willis is there. Oh, people and they at go, home are missing out on the expressions and the mannerisms. Yes. <laughs> but, like, they, they so go, it reminds you of so-and-so uh, from a few years ago, the guy who killed all these people on a train. In, in that movie, Unbreakable, that's what Sam Jackson's character did. He killed all these people on a train to like discover Bruce Willis's power Sweet. and people go who was that guy who was that guy and it pans over fucking Bruce Willis is like yeah his name was Mr. Jangles or whatever <laughs> and so I think that was it actually <laughs> was it? no I don't know what it was it was some it was like Mr. Sprinkles or some weird it could be maybe that was, I don't it was know. some weird name Mr. Jangles <laughs> I don't know but so there, there's talk that M. Night Shyamalan's going to make like a, an Avengers bullshit M. Night Shyamalan thing. <laughs> so the shyamalan verse Dude. <laughs> Would you watch that? I, I don't know. From your description, I'm interested in watching Split now. So you yeah. said it's that a trilogy? Intriguing. Like three different movies? Well, this is set up as some kind of sequel in this day and age. Sequel like There's probably a third one. Okay. Yeah, it's like an unofficial sequel to Unbreakable. Okay. Sort of. <clears throat> So oh, okay. then there's, okay. So they might make another one, like a third one that connects them all. Yeah. I don't know. Very cool. I don't know. I'll probably watch it now. Yeah. Sounds interesting. I think the trailer probably didn't do it justice. I think your, no. your description of it is what's going to get me to watch it now. Well, I'm biased though because <laughs> I really liked it. <laughs> but anything is better than The Happening. Have you seen that one? No. That's, That's the, the one, one with, with Mark trailers. Wahlberg. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Where the trees are killing people? I think people. I got really bored and stopped watching it halfway yes. through. What happens is the trees are killing people with, like, Spoilers. gases. Pollen and stuff, yeah. right? Super strong pollen. Oh, yeah. Po- spoiler. Wait, yeah. Didn't somebody get run over with a lawnmower in that movie? Like, they, like, passed out or something? On well, the- it makes people, like, go dormant and just, like, drive into buildings and yeah. jump off of buildings. And- I saw somebody get run over with a lawnmower. I was like, that's cool. Yeah. But it's been done. Yeah, and the fact that he did the uh, last Airbender movie, oh, that was so bad. M Night did that. Yeah, yep. no, that's why I hate him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. no, I don't hate him. <laughs> he directs a lot of big movies. Yeah, that movie was just atrocious, though. That's a pretty it was. weird. Uh, it was terrible. A weird pairing. Yeah, I, like I, I, I wouldn't think of him 
Who's who's gonna direct this movie that's based on a cartoon? I'm not Shyamalan. Yeah, let's get the <laughs> Sixth Sense guy. Yeah, right? that'll for sure. work. He's good at twists and stuff, right? There's tons of twists. In <laughs> Airbender, right? <laughs> no. There's he no. also directed that movie with Will Smith and his son, where they're like lost on a planet. Uh, yeah. after, after Earth, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I saw like a couple minutes of that. It's, it was pretty corny. Was yeah. <laughs> I wanted to see it. It looked interesting, but never did. All right, well, we're at about our 30-minute mark, so we're going to take a little break. Part two, we'll come back. We'll talk about Frostfoot. <laughs> I'm excited. Oh, I'm stoked. All right. All right, welcome back to the show. This is part two, the guest interview section. It's not really an interview, but without further ado, let's get started. The main reason you're on this show, Jesse, and you, J Mac, <laughs> is to promote Frostfoot. This is Frostfoot. A, a, an epic fantasy, would you say, Jesse? Yeah, yeah, uh, a sci fi fantasy. Yes. Yeah. And it's about, what is the name of the world again? Uh, the world is Selene. Okay. Um, and yeah, so the Frostfoot follows uh, a thief named Kenny Rothman and a really advanced piece of technology that he's swiped. Uh, and it just kind of follows his exploits. Uh, and, and there's seven chapters, right? Yes. Okay, so there's three out now. You can watch. You can read chapter three right now. Just go to the website temporaryspace.net. Mm -hmm. There's going to be seven total for Frostfoot. Yes. This is this is the the first book. Yes. Right. It's a, it's a prequel to. Uh, Fuck yeah. 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 <laughs> the, the entire story, at least at least right now, uh, the title is the Seven Vessels. Okay. But that might change if I if I think of something that I, I think clicks better. That sounds cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. Right? Okay. It, it's got an epic yeah. sound yeah. feel to it. Yeah. Well, I'm excited because this is the first time like our company's ever done anything besides like videos. So we don't really know how to distribute books. <laughs> but it seems slightly more established because obviously books came first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're kind of a thing. Yeah. Books <laughs> exist. You know. Yeah, it's a thing. People read. Yeah. yeah. For fun? What? Yeah. What? <laughs> Okay, so I have some questions for you that I kind of wanted to. I also forgot to set my timer, so hold on. Alrighty. Um. So you, I know you. I've known you. How long have I known you? Like ten years? Has it been that long? Uh, about yeah. I, wow. I met you. That's like, crazy. Right around when I when I got into college and out of high school. Okay. I was dating Daisy, and I met you through her and her bigger her older brother. Yeah. Okay, so it's been a while, and so as long as I've known you, I've been roommates like, at some point. Yeah, we were roommates for a, a year or two. Yeah, and as long as I've known you, I you've like maybe half the time I've known you, you've talked about this mm. this epic story. Blabbering, yeah. Yeah, you would always <laughs> yeah, talk about it. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, and and like I honestly we in the beginning we we're like oh, he'll never write it. Yeah, but I'm after sure. after a few years, you actually started writing it, right? Yeah. So yeah. my question is. Have you always been a writer, or is this something you started recently, in, like in the last five, ten years? Like when? When did you decide I'm a writer? Uh, around that same time, like late high school, I wrote a short little draft for a story that same world, not Frostfoot, not Kenny Rothman. It's the bigger thing that I want to get to later. Awesome. Uh, it's not to get into the plot too much, but it. It revolves around uh, these two twin brothers, who are the son sons of uh, a renowned inventor in the world, Celine. Um, but yeah, I, I wrote a like a little like two page thing. It was awful because uh, <laughs> it's two pages and like. Yeah. But uh, that was the first like big thing that I that I started writing, and I realized that like yeah, I want to be a writer. Uh, <clears throat> that's tight 
Yeah. Because I don't, I don't think writing is necessarily one of those things where you have to have a degree to do it. No, you just you know, need, It's not like being a doctor either. or something. You just need imagination and yeah. really just drive to get the yep. Yeah, to just sit there sure. and type it out, yeah. right? Yeah. This thing finally started getting some girth on it within the last, like, two or three years, though. <laughs> girth? Interesting <laughs> Yeah, word. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I guess my next question is, how many, how long have you actually been thinking about this idea? So, if that was the first one, what year was that? Um, wait, wait, what year was what? When you wrote that first short story. Oh, yeah, like, what, seven years ago? 2009 or 10 I okay. guess yeah cool so yeah. it's like a seven year idea that's, yeah. that's coming to fruition so, you know you come up with like a concept you're like that's a cool concept you know maybe maybe I can just tell somebody and they'll turn it into something else <laughs> like no it's, it doesn't work like that like uh, you gotta do a lot more leg work than that yeah, yeah like you have to do it <laughs> yeah and uh I started writing a little bit when I was roommates with you and roommates with Simmons. That was like a golden age for creativity for me, you know. Yeah. I, I had I had a couple of kids, and they're they're awesome, and I, I've got a I had a significant other, but you know, not a lot of time for the fun stuff with all that going on. Um, yeah. But you know, uh, I found some free time again, and I, I was like, I gotta get on this shit. Um, and I hopped on it. Now I'm about 100 pages deep. Yeah. That's about... I'm at like 85 pages, I think, the last time I checked. And with this last chapter I have to write, it's going to be around 100. Okay. They're short. They're, they're like 8 to 10 page chapters. It kind of, kind of varies, but... But you're just getting started. This is the yeah. warm-up. This is... Yeah, yeah. Right? It's just the intro. Really. <clears throat> well, exciting. It was supposed to just be a short story, mm -hmm. and then... Uh, there's some like word count uh, mm -hmm. it's like qualification. A, it's I forgot like a, what it is. It's a novella now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like short story and then like novelette and then novella and yeah. then novel. Or something. Oh, these are the different categories yeah, of length. Yeah, so short right. story is yeah. like less than ten pages. I want to say. Or yeah, something yeah. Like that. Oh, and then novelette's like overshot the mark. Ten there, to and fifty, like, and then novella is like around a hundred. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Those are the like official ones. There was also an earlier draft when I was going to UTD and I had a creative writing class. Uh, I had a draft that was like like five or six pages long. And we all had to write a short story and submit it. And I had already been working on that, so I kind of cheated on that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, nobody there knows that. Um, but I got a lot of really good criticism there. Uh, mm. Good feedback and... I made some major changes. Yeah. And I had to add a whole other segment, which is like Jillian. She was she didn't exist in that draft. Uh, Ty Boone. A lot of cool characters just yeah. were not around. It was like pretty much chapter one and then chapter seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was it. Then like, you like yeah. so the rest is like filling in the blanks. Yeah. Kind yeah. Of? Which is like so much fun to write. That's dope. Yeah. yeah. So, was there anything specific, like, when you said the golden age, like, when you were living with me mm -hmm. and Simmons, uh, was there any one event that made you start writing then, or was it, it was just the environment was right? Yeah, good, uh, good environment, um, good inspiration, uh, not playing a lot of video games, uh, also I worked at Studio Movie Grill, and I spent a lot of time up there, like, watching movies and seeing how plots got developed mm -hmm. and how people reacted to them and like what what would look cool but wasn't cool which movies were actually good uh, were there any movies that came out that like you think that affected you like the types of genres <laughs> that they were having cool movies that came out while I was working there uh, The Watchmen, uh, Watchmen oh yeah mm -hmm. just like how colorful it was yeah. uh there's a bunch of them, honestly. Um, okay. It's hard to comb through it all, but yeah, there's a lot, a lot of good inspiration up there, you know. Well, I'm sure having like friends to bounce your creative ideas off of yeah. helped a lot, especially yeah. like 
at all times. I mean, you're living with them. Yeah, most definitely. So there must be some truth to that, like, artists living together, that oh, kind yeah. of hippie idea of Foster's it. Foster's creativity. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, Bob Marley, he had, like, a house, and it was, like, a constant party. <laughs> <laughs> That's how uh, our house, our apartment was, too. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I miss those days. Yeah. Me, too. <laughs> okay, so my last question, it's kind of about what inspired the story, mm-hmm. but I kind of want to... Talk more about that and like Final Fantasy. So why don't you, you have some questions. I do. And again, you are the editor of the story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so these are kind of more questions from an editing standpoint. So, okay. Uh, first one, uh, again, goes into kind of editing. Um, so what's like your creative process? I mean, do you just like think and just start writing or do you need to be doing something else and get struck by inspiration? Are you like me and you have to have everything planned out to the letter before you even put pen to paper? <laughs> like, yeah, I definitely need a good block of time that I know I'm not, I don't have anything going on. Mm. Uh, I prefer to write during the day, I've realized recently. Nice. Yeah. Uh, you would think like, yeah, I could write at night all the time, but like I'm just, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I like to write during the day, middle of the day is good. Which, unfortunately, I don't have too many days like that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when I get it done, it, it gets going. Uh, and just, yeah, music and quiet time yeah. it really helps. Reflection time, kind yeah. of. Yeah, I definitely get that. Yeah, quiet time. Yeah. But yeah. Uh-huh. All right, which character do you see yourself most in? That's a good question, man. Yeah. Um, I, I got to give you that. Uh <clears throat> I was pretty proud of it. Proud about that a lot. <laughs> uh, as much as I want to say Kenny, it's probably not true. Yeah. Um, Everybody wants to see themselves as their main character. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, I'm not an adventurous. <laughs> uh, I guess some of his mannerisms, but um, mm-hmm. probably a character that is in that chapter you're holding right there, chapter yeah, four. Uh, that's right. I'm holding chapter four. Oh, it's yeah. top secret. Yeah, top secret material. Um, <laughs> there's a, a character in there, Sergeant Glenn, mm-hmm. who's he's a he's a cool character. He's fun fun to write. Not super complex. Okay. But he's well meaning. Um, so are you saying you're not super complex then? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, trap you like that. <laughs> Uh, um, so I do mean I'm an Glenn. editor. I trap you with your words. Maybe even like Jill to an extent. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I just like writing her. All uh, right, but yeah. Yeah. Well, then, kind of that leads into my next question: um, Who was your favorite character to write, and why? I mean, yeah. yeah. I when I <laughs> came up with Jill. Um, when I had that first draft I was telling you guys about, mm-hmm. <clears throat> this is the first chapter, and then like I cut, I cheated my way to where it's like when well, he winds up on the other side of the planet. Uh, oh, yeah. And then I was like, this, and traveling this is never occurred. gonna do. Yeah, traveling <laughs> happened. So I was like, well, I just gotta, I gotta have this whole boat thing. It's gonna suck, you know. How do I make it interesting? And I thought, well, he's a thief. Why don't I give him a back, a background with like some pirates, you know? Yeah. And I was like, and I also realized, like, I don't have, like, many female characters in this thing. Um, for me, as, a, like, a newish writer, male characters are easier to write because, like, I identify with them, I guess. But uh, I needed some, some chicks in there. I thought, maybe a cool, like, like hot pirate captain. Uh, <laughs> cool, hot pirate sold. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. Not, not to, like... <laughs> sexualize or anything but like, you know I plan on making her pretty fine it's okay uh, to have a hot pirate I think yeah. so uh, she was really fun to write when I, when I finally got it got it going um, I got got to make her a tomboy because she's a pirate yeah. and a captain um, when she's she's a badass she's badass she really is, yeah. she's gonna be <laughs> and like I got plans for her like, yeah. uh, she's gonna be badass she's gonna stay badass yeah She's not someone you want to fuck with, that's for yeah, sure. Definitely not. I also liked writing, uh, like I said, Sergeant Glenn. Yeah. I didn't think I would write anything about him, really. And, You're just uh, kind of like a... He winds up being... He, he's, he's big in next coming chapters. 
Oh, yeah. One of my... One of the most mo colorful characters that I've seen so far was the uh, the mayor of Port Drek, or yeah, yeah. He uh, he's interesting because he's 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 kind of dumb. <laughs> it's really <laughs> funny. Yeah, <laughs> and it's 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 impressive how you do it, but like he's like almost instantly like an endearing character because you're just like ah. Oh. Yeah, he's just kind of like good. lovable. Well, character. and then he's like he he also like right off the bat has that chemistry with Jillian, and then you learn about like their history, like they they have history, yeah. like they know each other and stuff. But it, yeah. whenever, whenever I bring somebody new into the story, I you know first impressions are good. I want to want to have them uh, want to have them have strong introductions. And I yeah, start that's good. Building start memorable, building yeah. their personalities and make sure I don't just rewrite. You and I had a discussion about this when we were editing. Uh, mm. Like, some writers, all the characters just sound like the same person. Oh yeah, it's, but it's, I have everybody talk a little bit differently. You know? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm always reading, and it's the mark of a good writer is can you tell that every character has a different voice? You know, so some people have have a hard time breaking up their own thoughts into like different speech patterns and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not something you really think about, but when you're mm. reading it on the paper, if everybody talks in the same, like, the same tone and the same everything, like, it's, it just sounds like the same person. <laughs> and it's, yeah. Yeah. It's like you can see that in, in Frostfoot for sure. Like, everybody has their own personality, which is a cool thing. Yeah. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. And then the other guy that I really liked was Tyboon. Just because he's, yes. he's like that stoic badass that's just like no nonsense. Yeah. I'm glad that wasn't too boring, but... No, he's cool. He's all about <laughs> that. He, he does yeah. not mess around. <laughs> no, he's the, the true soldier, which is... Yeah. Everybody needs a true soldier. That's, yeah. I'm excited to see what's new, what's in store for him, too. Hey, speak up. You guys are like slowly getting quieter. <laughs> no, sorry. And like sorry. getting farther away. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Tyboon is awesome. I like Captain Tyboon. Yeah. He yeah. seems like a badass. And the, the <laughs> name, I got the name from a buddy of mine I play games with on Steam. <laughs> His really? account name is Tyboon. And I was like, what is Tyboon? Like, what is that? And he's like, I don't know, I made it up. <laughs> <laughs> is that well, how he sounds? <laughs> yeah, dude, he's, he is a Super ridiculous... Texan. Well, no, he's not Texan. He's, he's from, like, Washington or something. Oh, uh, but... He's he's a funny guy, um, and I was like, I like the name Tyboon, man. I, I I actually like I'm writing something. Do you mind if I use it? He's like, oh, sure, go ahead. <laughs> okay. and I was like, cool. I'll like, I'll make him badass for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like how you have. Oh wait, did you have more questions? No, I'm good. Oh yeah. I got yeah. I like how there's like a, a isn't there a, like a school of technology there? Yeah. Or is it like a company or kind of both? That was it's a it is a school. That was one of the earlier ideas for like that later, you know. Oh, oh, this plans is top for the future. Stuff. No, Never it's mind. cool. It's yeah, not so it's, it's no if secret. You don't know what we're talking oh, okay. about. <laughs> it's not a secret or anything. Um, but yeah, uh, there was a school of like uh, engineering, engineering, technology. yeah, invention stuff like that. Uh, technology is a huge. Like, the rapid growth of technology is really big in this story. Yeah, um, I like it. I want the environment to kind of feel and look like maybe, like, 1600s or yeah. so, but with, like, a couple of oddities in there. Hmm. Um, and I also, like, you know, we call it fantasy, but <clears throat> there's no magic or anything. Uh, everything that happens, I want it to be grounded in, like, physics to, awesome. a degree, to a degree. Yeah. Uh, of course, some things I can't explain because I'm not a physicist. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's where research comes in. Building all that stuff is cool. <laughs> that, those are like little details and ideas that I've been like tossing around in my head for the last like nine years. Yeah, um, I like it. For me, that was the best part was like the, the description of like the there's like a gun. Mm -hmm. There's a certain kind of gun in there. And like, yeah. I don't want to give away other stuff, but it's cool. It's all right. Yeah. Uh, the gun, the guns have cool backstories. I'm working that out. Uh, nice. 
the board has a very cool backstory, and I've already got that all worked out. Um, nice. Yeah, and the tech, the cool, like awesome technological items, they keep coming. That's gonna be a a keystone in, mm -hmm. in the story. It works well with the artwork. There's also a lot of artwork uh -huh. connected to this that you've drawn over time. Oh yeah, I and doodle, I, think it's I dope. sketch. But we're trying to find a way to put it on the website to, so you can watch that. You can look at that too. Yeah. Like a kind of gallery. Yeah, like a gallery it, style yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, I, I've been sketching with pencil and paper forever. <laughs> and like, yeah, I, I think I'm definitely okay. Uh, and I just recently got an iPad and started trying to teach myself how to color everything. Uh, on that? Yeah, I, I can show you. I, don't, I haven't so shown much you on any iPads illustrations. I know. It's, I, I mean, I have one of my best friends, is his ex was always drawing on her like computer. She had one of those like drawing pads mm -hmm. for her computer and stuff. And it's, it's crazy what people can do with that stuff. And yeah. I always get distracted when I'm in class and like I see somebody like a few rows down and they're like, doodling on their Doing computer and I'm epic. just like oh amazing <laughs> I only know how to type on a computer <laughs> have I even shown you any illustrations I have not seen any illustrations oh you haven't seen any of them no well, dude that's like half of what time. sold me on the story was the you've pictures. seen like the logo at least right yes I've seen the logo because it's on the I like that one yeah that's the it's one on the website. Website. Look at it's on the it. website yeah that's that's the icon it's the Frostful logo yeah mm. I will but have the, it there's tattooed. like technical <laughs> They're almost technical drawings. Like, there's a map you made. Nice. Yep. Uh, no, I like the every, map. Every epic. When I was living map. with Simmons, he helped me with the map. Nice. Uh, we looked at some maps. Mm. Uh, cartography. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we also like started pun or using this random word generator. I had talked to you about that. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean, like some online to make names yeah, yeah. and stuff? It just generates a word for you, and I was like, "All right, so the mountains are going to be called this." That's why I have the Lucos Mountains. I got that from oh, there. Oh, that's Drod yeah. is the capital city. I got that from there. Uh, Selena came up with. I don't really know what inspired that. Were you watching that movie Selena with Jennifer Lopez? I must have been. <laughs> I have it on Blu-ray, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, what has inspired this story? Like, are there any specific ones? Like, yeah. Because I know Final Fantasy is at least part of it, right? I was playing Final Fantasy X. Uh, oh, so it's 10. 10. That's my. I couldn't decide if it was 7 or 10. Yeah, that's one of my favorite games, Final yeah. Fantasy X. Uh, the. You know, when you look at it, if you looked at a commercial about it, you would say, like, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Like, these giant birds and these magic, <laughs> this magic, and then there's lasers. Mm -hmm. And how's that guy carrying a sword that looks like it weighs 400 pounds? Yeah. yeah. A little and swinging it. Yeah. Uh, but, like, the story is really powerful. Um, it's dude, it's a fantastic story. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. It's the only Final Fantasy I've ever uh, beaten. Really? You got See, pretty seven's, close. Seven's the only one I've beaten. And what about you? Because you you're into Final Fantasy a oh, lot, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, I've played all of them. Have you beaten all of them? No. <laughs> Which ones have you beat? Uh, seven and nine are the only two I've beaten. Mm -hmm. Ten I've gotten extremely close on several occasions. Yeah. And then is it that hard that like no it's not hard it's just it just takes some time oh okay and usually I'll be playing it and then something else will come out and I'll like start playing that mm -hmm. and then I'll it'll be I'll, it'll be time for me to go back and play ten and I'm like oh I don't know I don't remember what's happening I need to wow. start over <laughs> and then I just get trapped by that constant start over you know the last couple hours of Final Fantasy X are tough man yeah it, it escalates you have to. I remember getting to the last boss, and I got my ass kicked. So I had to go back and farm for like an hour, just like oh. to get a few um, levels on my guys. I always grind, so yeah. I'm always like way ahead yeah. of where I should be. <laughs> another uh, another game that I was playing, I, I just kind of re remembered this, that I think inspired the uh, Frostfoot. You know, it's shaped like a board, a snowboard. Um, I was playing SSX a lot. The dude. original one on PlayStation 2? Dude, yeah. The game's it's tricky. Man. It's <laughs> that one? <laughs> no, 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 Not no, SSX. Tricky. Oh, okay. Tricky was like the sequel. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Because I was living with Simmons, and we were very competitive about everything that we did, <laughs> like darts. We had a dart board. That was nice. good times. Uh, SSX, we like... I love that game. Oh, I remember you had a so dart fun. board. Yeah. We set records. <laughs> we played darts to decide who got the master bedroom. <laughs> Dude, that's epic. And that's how I won. Yeah. That's how you won it? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. great. Yeah. That was a good way to Put sell stuff. Put that in a stuff. movie, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just like fr- like that Friends episode where they uh, they do trivia or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot of games, a lot of RPGs with great story uh, inspire me. Any other specific titles? Uh, yeah. The Mass Effect is good. Oh, um, yeah. You always talk about the story and the yep. first one, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Overall, I mean, the whole story overall is still pretty good, but like the first one's definitely the best. It felt solid and compact. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That's how I feel about Frostfoot. Uh, okay, solid story and it's compact. Yeah, as I'm like coming closer to finishing writing it, though, I'm definitely starting to feel a little anxiety. Yeah, you know. I have to make sure everything's yeah. tied together <laughs> just right. Yeah, because it's the internet. Like, if there's plot holes, people will tell you. They'll tear me up. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I don't even know if anyone's... I don't even know if you guys man. are going to like how it ends. Like, you might already know. Uh, I think you I do. Think so. I think I've told you, but... Yeah. I don't know. Uh, whatever. I don't know. I'm not going to change anything. <laughs> Screw you guys. It's my story. It is my <laughs> story. <laughs> so... But, Okay, so you play Final Fantasy a lot, and you played it a lot. I'm I'm more of a Skyrim. I, Final Fantasy yeah, is like too yeah. hard for me. Well, I like yeah. it. I like Skyrim it simplified awesome and dumbed story down too. Who? Skyrim's got a great story. Yeah, they do have a good story. Yeah, it's a great game. One of my favorites. Uh, but you could argue that the gameplay is a bit more like simplified and easier. I don't know about that. It's just a different no? type of gameplay. I mean, Maybe it's Final turn-based. Fantasy is turn based. Yeah. yeah. Except the new one isn't, right? Yeah, fifteen is not. And you still play that one? It's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, I haven't played it. I'm gonna pick it up soon. I haven't played it since around Christmas time, but that's because we started playing Destiny again. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so what yeah. about uh, Final Fantasy Online? Have y'all played that? Yes. Is it good? Uh, so I have a lot of strong feelings about online MMOs because there are some that are like you you buy the game and then you have the game like Guild Wars 2 you don't have to worry about paying a monthly subscription oh, yeah. and a lot of a lot of MMOs are kind of going towards that which I think is better because when you buy the game you shouldn't have to pay twenty dollars a month to yeah. keep playing your game yeah but Final Fantasy 14 does that and you have to pay a subscription really? so I I mean I I play that game every once in a while. I'll like go pay for a month, yeah. play like that's five days out of the month, because I'll I'll, I'll I'll like I'll like binge play for like five days, and then I'll just like get distracted with something else. I'm easily distracted, <laughs> <laughs> but and then my month is out, and I'm like, damn, I don't want to pay for another month. So then I won't play it for another like three or four months. Huh. So I mean it's. It's also because I'm older and don't have quite as much time to invest. So in the an monthly MMO. fee isn't what stops you. It's like the time investment. No, it's more the monthly fee. I probably that's what stops me. I'd probably pay it more often if I, I mean, if I had it. Like if like I, if we had to pay for Destiny, I would never play it. Yeah, no. yeah. I mean, we do. I guess we do kind of pay with the we DLC. Pay for, well, we pay for live or, or PlayStation Plus. Yeah. But that's I mean that's one like flat fee and it, it encompasses. All PlayStation games for yeah. online play, which is to be expected. Yeah. And you're paying for that, and yeah. then you got to pay another fifteen per month for yeah. the game. Well, and that's yeah. that's the thing too. It's like fifteen per month. You already had to pay for the game. Yeah, but like servers Final cost Fantasy. money though. Like for MMOs, I know it costs money, and that's, I mean, but there are games out there. Like like I said, Guild Wars two. You pay. And it's what, like, it, like servers that are still up, and you don't. It's have to pay. still up. You don't have to pay subscription. Like I recently just started playing that again with some friends because I mean that came out three years ago, four years ago. Actually, Grand Theft Auto Online does that. You don't have to pay monthly, but yeah, like, yeah. well, in uh, what's it called? I think Wow. You don't have to pay monthly anymore. Is it is it free to play or whatever? I think it is. I think Elder Scrolls Online is free to play now. 
over we were there, talking yeah. about that. Yeah. Would I'm you ever play Elder Scrolls out. Online? I would, yeah. I kind of want to play it. I've, ne- I've never played it. It's not like Skyrim, though. It's just like an MMO that has, like, Elder Scrolls flavor. Yeah. Okay. I but, could work with that. Yeah, I kind of want to yeah. do it anyways. I'm done. I like playing games. Yeah. <laughs> There's very few games that I just... Won't no, try. I'm not going to play. <laughs> yeah. Especially if they're multiplayer games. Yeah. Yeah. They got a lot of more uh, multiplayer online games and more uh, open world games. Do y'all like open world? Yeah, yeah, I do. That's why. That's one thing I like a lot about the newest Final Fantasy is it's mm. it's very open world. That's cool. Which is pretty cool, and it's also the the fighting mechanics very similar to Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, that's what everyone right. says. It's a bit more hack and slash. Yeah, a lot more hack and slash. You don't know what the fuck's going on when you're fighting big groups of enemies because everybody's just like swinging yeah. swords and I heard the camera is and yeah, work. it's a little well, especially because like one of his abilities is he can throw his blade or shield or whatever and warp to it. So it's called oh, a, like in the movie, it's called a warp strike. Yeah, so he yeah. does that, and That's it's neat. yeah, it's it's kind of hard to keep track, but you, I mean, it's. You get used to it pretty quick, I think. The uh, I remember watching that movie and I liked it. I think I invited both you guys at some point. Or I was yeah. going yeah. to invite you. One of my other buddies was available. Yeah, I invited yeah. him. Um, <laughs> but you know, no offense. <laughs> you can, yeah, you, you know. Remember, because we were talking about it when we were closing at work. And yeah. I was like, well, if. If James doesn't want to go, like I'll totally go. And you were like, no offense, man, but I think I'm going to bring a girl. And yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm no. sure, I understand. It wasn't a girl, dude. It <laughs> was it? No. It was my friend Micah. That's a, that's a guy. But oh, never mind. I also well, didn't I know you were that into Final Fantasy. No. So yeah, this was, was kind of like when we were first starting to like yeah, yeah. really talk outside of work. Yeah, yeah. We like just just started working. Yeah, um, yeah. But that was in, like, I remember August. watching the movie and like the whole... Trying to follow that warp striking stuff was very difficult yeah. and like dizzying. Kind of, I didn't know what the hell was going on in that movie, <laughs> but it was pretty. It was a pretty movie. That's yeah, funny. I like those all CG movies. They're so cool. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys ever see uh, Advent Children? Final Fantasy yes. Seven. I know you probably Dude, saw it. Yeah. yeah. So good. It was because I remember it being way better than Spirits Within. Because I also. <laughs> yeah. that, so. I remember going to see that movie. The space and within being devastated because yeah. it was not Final yeah, Fantasy. Was a, yeah, I was, was like, it was what, too is emotional. What? what is this? Butthole. And I was Final like, what Fantasy. is this bullshit? There's no swords. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is this shooting, like, what is this? shooting like pink gusts? You, yeah. you can't call this Final Fantasy. I still don't understand how it applies to anything related to Final Fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> it still makes no sense to me. Yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was bad. Okay. Almost on the same level as Avatar. Yeah. Or not not Avatar, Airbender. Airbender. Yeah. Not the blue people. Not the blue people. No. Blue, and blue Native American. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're hitting on Mark. I just wanted to talk about Final Fantasy because it is kind of like this cultural thing. Yeah. And everybody has comes... their has their different favorites. Yeah. yeah. I mean, anybody who's played like, I don't know, like your favorites ten, mm. mine would be probably seven. But then tens of close both. So I, again, but. I, I still jam to the uh, Final Fantasy X soundtrack, <laughs> like all the time. Uh, it's so good. That's a cool thing about so Final Fantasy XV is because you're when you drive around the car, the regalia, you can play soundtracks from all of the previous games, what? and you can just like cycle through them. It's like different CDs in the car or something, wow. so you can like Dude. be listening to Final Fantasy no II way. and like flip over to. Yeah, okay, awesome. I I really want to play that game. Oh, the good. only thing stopping me is the fact that you have to like go camping and get food and stuff. It's not. You don't have to get food. It's it's yeah. like a it's a mechanic of camping. Like you just select a food that one of your party members makes for you. Okay, because like like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, they're yeah. like now you gotta exercise. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, is this? yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do that in real life. I don't want to do that in a game. Yeah. And you don't really have to camp. Okay. In the game, it's it's kind of like a it's how you tally up your experience. So if I'm an idiot that only plays Skyrim, like is it still will I be able to figure this game out? Oh yeah. Okay, it's pretty Let's straightforward. Throw yourself short, man. I think right. you could handle just, a new game. I, mean, I just I give up very easily. Like when I don't know where to go in a game, I hate that. Well, yeah, this one it's very. I mean, there's quest indicators that like tell you where you need to go. Oh, and I love stuff. my map markers. I, need I mean, them. I love in this game. You you can 
stock up experience before going to sleep at a place because that's when experience is tallied and you can like go to like a fancy hotel and it doubles your accumulated experience so it's like a way to like little like farm experience a little bit so i i'm like still only halfway through the game i've got like 40 hours sunk into it (laughs) and i'm i'm like end level like end of game level, like I'm, awesome. I'm, 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 like, I'm so already, strong already. <laughs> yeah. Dude, no wonder you are like a uh, uh, sword art online. You're like the main character. Oh, I am very much like. I, <laughs> what I am was a, his name? Kirito. Yeah, I am he was like, very much like whole, Kirito. The whole, the whole show is like whatever. I'm like level a million. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's how I play MMOs too. I like soloing. I don't. <laughs> I'm not big on like meeting random people on games. I tend to just go off on my own and just power grind for hours and hours. I like to do that. I like to do the yeah. PVE on Destiny by yeah. myself. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Playing uh, <clears throat> World of Warcraft. I always liked playing World of Warcraft. Yeah. Uh, PVE. Like, yeah. screw PvP. <laughs> There's so much stuff. Like, everyone's like, oh, I'm going to buy a new level 60 character. Like, that's the fun, man. The fun is the, the fun story. The fun is getting to the level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you... Yeah, I don't... You're robbing yourself. I, I do understand the... Uh, the desire to be max level though, so you can explore everything. For yeah. Me. Some people don't have the time to grind yeah. up to those levels. Anymore. Yeah, it just takes so long. Yeah. I'm, I miss being back in like high school. Yeah, that's the hardest <laughs> part. It's like I, don't, I wish so I could many spend, hours of free time. <laughs> yeah, you just can't spend like yeah. 300 hours on something anymore. No. Like I don't even have kids, and I can't do that. Yeah. Like I can't imagine how you make time to either, like yeah. play <laughs> Destiny. I don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Fair I sleep enough. for like five hours and maybe a nap the next day. It's That's probably pretty unhealthy, you know? <laughs> but I, I, I got a good night's sleep last night. I went to bed at midnight and I was like, that's like early for me. So my wife I slept and I for like nine hours. My wife and I are old sleep. people. She goes to bed at like eight o'clock at night. <laughs> almost every night. And she's got me on that schedule. So when I stay up late, like right now, I feel dead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm usually like past the f out right now, but all right. Well, speaking of late, we should probably wrap <laughs> it up. We'll wrap it up. Yeah. Thank you for coming on the show, guys. Nice, nice sir. Guys. Thank you, guys. And uh, we're gonna uh, go to a little a musical transition, and we'll have an outro. But uh, this is the end of the guest section. Thanks for joining. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm with Jesse Pennington and James McIntosh. Check out Frostfoot. Yeah, First three chapters are there. Chapter yeah. four coming soon. Chapter four Chapter is in the hands of the editor. It's four, coming soon. Yeah. Five is just just finished writing five. Uh, six, you get on that one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> one point. <laughs> All right. All right, folks. It's about that time. The show's almost over. In summary, we talked about how our franchises are running together. Uh, VR and movies are becoming a thing. Desktops are disappearing. Laptops are becoming crazy powerful. We also talked about Netflix and where that's going. And we also talked about M. Night Shyamalan's movie career or possible future. And finally, we talked about the epic sci-fi adventure, Frostfoot, written by Jesse Pennington. Please check it out on our website, temporaryspace.net. There's three chapters out. The third one just came out. we got a fourth one coming soon. As always, our links to our sources are in the description. And thank you for tuning in to the Temporary Space Network. I'm your host, Jim Lettuce, and I'll see you next month.